things about it. So they say. These things don't leak, do they? Leak? Hell no. These things were made by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, 
swam, too. <laughs> because you guys want to know about our show. Yeah. And I, I, I believe that I was the last person considered, I, I'm, I'm getting intimate because I don't know about their situation, but my situation was I think I was the last actor considered for this, this, this film. And they were in rehearsal. They'd rehearsed for two weeks. And I think they went down the list we have lists in Hollywood. I think they went all the way down the list. <laughs> and I was at the bottom. And so Dan, the filmmaker, who wrote this really nice script, said, would you do it? I said, well, I, I, I would be honored to do it, but why did you pick me? <coughs> and he said, well, just say the words. I said, okay. In other words, uh, we have a cast system in Hollywood like you do in the car industry or like you do in the insurance industry and we had we have two of the very finest character actors on earth in this film in Cameron you know and Kelsa so they were in the film <laughs> and I was hired as in the cast system, I was considered what they call a leading man, which has nothing to do with the quality of the acting. It's just the categories they put us in so they can look quickly at who they want to put in a film. So they had these two great character actors, and they had this leading man. Then they hired all these young, brilliant actors to supplement these three very experienced actors and this the children, I call them, <laughs> more, or less, more or less outdid the us, the, the so-called experienced actors. They really worked. There was one actor, the big tall actor, who played the very vicious kind of punk actor. And he worked and worked and worked on his part because he felt this was a break. And it was a real break for him. He worked on it. He played this marvelous skeptical punk actor and then he died and he didn't get to capitalize on the success of this film or the success of his portrayal these tragic things happen in our work like they happen in your work and I I was very disappointed that he didn't I think he could have been one of the leading like actors in Hollywood death. had he been alive, you know, but he died. But clue, clue, it's like sex and death. Uh, that's where Lene comes in. Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, that was um John who died. No. Or, oh. I mean Mark. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Uh, I know, I'm not gonna say that again. I mean Mark Venturini. We all have John yeah. in our mind right now. Who played suicide, yeah. Yeah. That was sad. But we want to know about yeah. your naked part. Oh, about the naked part. Well, <laughs> I had a Barbie doll appliance on most of the time, but for the sh shots of the back of me, they had to take it off. So It was quite a sight. Yes. Because <laughs> the producer came and said, oh my God, we can't have any of this. You know, frontal nudity, oh my God. You know, he almost freaked out. And so they made the Barbie doll piece for me. And it worked out. Oh God! Oh God! Yes, let's tell the world how you had a shave. <laughs> Dan O'Bannon had to explain to me because it was before it was in. Um, <laughs> unshaved and everything. I mean, he had the whole thing down. And he came to this and that, and this and that. And the reason they had me shave is also because they had to pour latex. Stuff under, under me, in my underwear to make a mold of something. <laughs> and when they pulled it off, it would have hurt a lot. <laughs> oh. So that's how that happened. That's how doing the nudity. Oh, yeah. Um, I was, you know, when I turned into the zombie, I was just plastered with white makeup. And 
oh, for a while, I think the actors and some of the others were going, hey, Graham and her are having an affair, which was the executive producer. And it was because I sat, I was freezing to death, and he offered to sit in his heated Jaguar with leather seats, and my paint <laughs> still is on his rubber seats. I mean, it's leather seats. So I think his girlfriend was a little bit skeptical about that. <laughs> Time to give 
a demo. The thing about the walk is that when, um, when I first went to audition, they explained the character to me, and they said, well, he's basically like dissolving. Any second, he's just going to fall apart into a puddle. So there's like practically nothing holding him together. So I just uh, came up with a, what struck me as would be, what would it be like if my hips were just about to go squirt and fall out of the floor? <laughs> so I ended up doing this kind of a thing as I walk, where just barely... <laughs> when you're not in costume, but, <laughs> but there you are. Yeah, and you can still do it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm pretty pleased about that. I haven't thrown my back out yet. Yeah, I know. Tell me about the puppet show you do. The puppet, puppet show. show. Uh, puppet up? Puppet. puppet is, up. is that puppet the naughty up. one? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So, uh, in case you don't know, I'm also a puppeteer. And I've worked for many years with the Jim Henson Company and a lot of other uh, production companies. And uh, we, right now we do this show that's a, a live uh, puppet improv show that's been, uh, we tour around the country sometimes. Uh, we've been to the, we haven't been too close to here yet, though we haven't been up into the Detroit area yet. But uh, the show's called Puppet Up, so if uh, you ever hear about that, uh, Coming into town. Uh, like an it's like an X-rated. Well, it's not X-rated. It's improv. <laughs> it's improv, so we can't control necessarily where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I like to keep it sort of PG-13. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, so but no it, it dips. Dogs? <laughs> what? No. Uh, no. Oh, well, okay. there isn't. Well, that's my kind of show. <laughs> okay. So you guys to there, there are animal puppets. That's about it. I got another question for you. What was it like in your tarmac suit? It was yeah. uh, wet and clammy. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, because it, you know as soon as I worked, it got kind of warm in there. It was a um, like a like a foam uh, applique thing, and so uh, but it's just a suit that I put on. So I would work in it and get kind of sweaty, and then. Before each take, they would put this goop on me and then spray me down with water so that I would be, you know, dripping. And then it would get really cold, really fast because it would start evaporating, right? So then it would get cold and clammy. And then I'd work and I'd be warm again. And they'd spray me down and I'd get cold and clammy. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that for like two weeks, and I was like, uh, get me out of here. <laughs> and so my last day of work, I climbed out of the suit, and that's when they went right into shooting the uh, the, the knocking the, the head off. That was the last thing we shot, so I walked out of the uh, the basement, and then cut, you know, swings and cut, and then they got another guy who's this tall <laughs> to get in my suit. It's like, oh, oh you poor oh. man. <laughs> I'll be home having a coffee. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah. Oh my God. That was my last day of work. On the Someone raised a hand. Yeah, we saw a hand. He answered, like, he answered my question. I was, ah. they had the tarnian suit. I forget his name. Wow. It was a nice guy. Short. <laughs> Shorty. Shorty was his name. Uh, James Cameron, James Cameron, the, the, the man who played my assistant in the film, and it was, it was so wonderfully uh, funny. Uh, He's very ill. He has pneumonia. Oh, uh, I was told by Michael, our, our, our leader, and uh, he wanted to come down, but was unable to. I think, how old is he now? Uh, 93. How old? 93. He's 93, and he, he, his mind is still really good, and better than, I guess, all of ours, really. <laughs> <laughs> but his body said, no, no. So, But he wanted to come be with you, and... and it, it was just Mother Nature's, you know, trick. So that's what happened to James. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm just like to cry. Oh, oh my God, it's crazy. No, it's that crap by the tanks. It got them chemicals. It's all over everything. Stupid asshole. Watch your tongue, boy, if you like this job. I like this job. Think, think. We gotta call the cops. You don't want to call the cops? You know what the cops will do to this company? We can't about the company. Well, think of our reputation. Of your reputation. the boss.
Yes. Bert, Frank, we have a little problem. We had a question over here. Um, I was just wondering if uh, you kept in contact with Dan O'Bannon before he passed away, and if you had any funny stories about him. <laughs> I, only saw him, you know, I only saw him once at the 20th anniversary of the Egyptian. Oh, right. He, I think he was there. Wasn't yeah, he? and he was talking and talking and talking and talking. Very boring. Yeah, and I think I, I, think I just was not very polite and I said, well, you let somebody else talk. Oh, my God. I did. I did in front of this oh massive theater of people, and I thought, why did I just say that? But then everybody else got to talk. Oh, the production man. designer and everything else like, oh, I do. It was terrible. Well, I know Dan really well. I knew Dan really well. Um, he was a very good friend. Yes, he was crazy. Yes, he's all those things that um, you've heard about, yes. But on the other hand, he hired Tom here because Tom used to be a carpenter. Remember what she used to do at his house? Yes, we did. Yeah, see, Dan liked this thing. He thought that, that a machete, no, what, machine guns. Machine well, guns. I was worried about the earthquakes. Too. Okay, no, he was worried about machine guns coming in, by in Santa Monica. He lived in this very small bungalow in Santa Monica, Spanish style, but we ended up ripping out the whole inside of it and putting in three quarter inch plywood on the inside and then we plastered it. No, and then he put it in sand because he thought that that the sand would somehow stop He's the, very eccentric, right? the, uh, the machine guns that would be pointing his way and shooting at him. And then in his bedroom he had a four poster bed in case the earthquake he was protecting. Oh my God! And this is we're talking about a very expensive part of LA, and there's no street game. And, but there's know. always the, 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 there's always the conversation of Santa Monica falling into the ocean. Yeah, a, but what did you not? What, so he goes ahead and does this, yeah. and he doesn't get the bulletproof windows. <laughs> <laughs>
came back and I did notice the crew all doing this. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't catch on. I thought maybe something happened while I was in the makeup. Yep. And um, yeah. yeah, I didn't want yeah. this. And so um, I come in. He goes, okay, we're going to rehearse this. We're going to rehearse this. Okay. Run right up the step. Bam! Right through the floor onto the, onto the concrete. And I was just like, oh my god. And so I was, and they did not use that take. You'll see it's a oh, stunt person. So I'm so sorry. Right, right. But um, I was black and blue from my hip to my ankle. And I, was I just saw like, you. Oh my You're god. Bad. Yeah, and You're everyone bad. was just like, we're so sorry, we're so sorry. They didn't use that take. And yeah. they didn't use the take. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, he's dead. Never mind. Don't <laughs>
you know, was not like, oh God, nudity is bad. So I accepted it. And I loved the punk part, and I loved all of it, and all the rehearsals we had. Anytime I do a nude scene, I'm nervous. You know, you're being looked at, and it's uh, nerve-wracking. But I really didn't have a problem being nude and doing the scene when I was in it. Good. She's a real actor. Uh, she's she's a, a really good actor. Most good actors don't have problems with that kind of attitude in, in film, although it is, it's nerve-wracking. It makes, makes her nervous, she said. I, I have a question. You should be sitting out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, now, I've always wanted to know, and I've never gotten this answer, is that why would Beverly come with us? Because I was a bachelor. No, but, but like, why are you dating a guy? I mean, like, why? How did you find us? Stop sweet yeah. and innocent. Yeah. No, yeah. How did you find us? Because of me. Cool. You? Yes. But she accepted you me, and you were my friends. That's how it works, so man. Cute. But how come you look normal? We all look geeky. I, <laughs> yeah, I look that I, way I, to get I a, a job. I have a little rat tail. You guys, do you? I don't want to yeah. say that. Yeah. I don't I don't, even, I don't even think they like her because there's a part where she walks away and you hear uh, yeah, somebody go, oh, uh, you know, like, make it fun of her. Shame on you. That was really, that's it? That's the, that's the whole story? Oh. Really? <laughs> she, she had other friends. Oh, yeah, so why were they in the car? Like, somebody cute. Because they were coming to see me. Yes. Oh, well, somebody cute. Go see the event. <laughs> <laughs> Even Dan, because normally when you when you write a movie, you want every, all the actors to stick to your words. But Dan had written the movie, but he knew about it. He knew a little bit about it, so he was able to just, just let go of it and use the actors, because that's the best directors. If you use the actor and what they bring to it in their life experiences, it'll make them more honest. It'll make the movie better. So, so um, it was a collaboration. So it was. It was you know, I remember the, the two weeks we had, that he said, how does that, that line work for you? How, how is yeah. that? You were able to a little bit tweak your words, but you didn't get that. But you, did you improvise in the movie at all? Uh, no. And, but the reason I didn't, uh, I just had the, just got the part. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. We <laughs> and and uh, the other, and I've told this before, but I don't think you've heard it. The other people were so accomplished, the other actors, when I started working on the first day of that show, they started doing things that were like great professional stage film actors with these kids. And I said, boy, where'd they find them? They were something. I didn't know until after the movie finished, I did not know they had rehearsed. Beverly told me for two weeks, two weeks before I got on board. And I was an experienced actor. Oh yeah. And I said, well, I'm okay. But boy, when they started working and the camera was turning, it scared me to death because I said, I can't keep up with them. I'm, you know, I was an old guy then even. And uh, it was hard for me. And uh, they were, I didn't know they'd rehearsed. So I was, you know, they, they were searching all over town for this character and they, Everyone kept turning them down, I assume. The narrow. And I, I needed the money, so I took it. I took it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's literally why I took this part. And uh, it's not the kind of thing I was used to. I was a cowboy. And I was this and that. But I was not You're a, great a horror leading man, great as they say. And I didn't know what to do. The script was funny. And O'Bannon. I thought he, you know, he'd written Alien, 
one of the great American films of the last century. So I said, this guy is really big time. So I, I took the role, and then I got scared because the kids were so good. They scared me. Wow. Yeah. I was scared for wow. most of the film. You were Yeah. 
We, it was good. It's kind of good. We had fun. Had a lot of fun in that film. He was a tyrant. Yes. Yeah, he was a fucking tyrant. <laughs> And this guy damn near went over a fucking table. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. I gotta quote you, man. You said I was one of the finest actors in North America. In North America. That takes in Canada and the Yukon. <laughs> and anyway, uh, yeah, that we had a, a pretty pretty terrific time on, on that film. God, you looked awful. Oh, Tommy, yes. Oh, God. Yes. You know, and guys, uh, you know, I can see you running through that fucking hallway. <laughs> yes. What happened? I could barely see. I could barely see. I, I, I know, I know it. They were, yeah, play. And you got hurt. The last time I see. I got hurt on that, that scene. It was just the, last, the, very, the very last shot, and the very last, when I'm trying to bust through, and the eye, and you're about to kill me. Uh, yeah, one, I, I quite, uh, one of the things about this guy in the middle, he, when he was doing this, he was very athletic. He wasn't, uh, uh, you know, the older, solid actor. He was a new actor, more or less. Flexible. And he he didn't know about stuntmen. <laughs> stuntmen are hired to protect the actors so they can work the next day, and the next day, and the next week, and the film keeps going. He didn't know that. So there was one scene where they had these big, thick, heavy pews in a church, and he was a monster. Yeah, the director says, yeah. Tom, you come crashing through the door and get over these pews as best you can to get to these people to kill them. He had no pads, his back was vulnerable, his knees, <laughs> his elbows, all the things that the stuntmen practice padding, and they know how to land, how to jump, yeah. and do this and that. <clears throat> Tom was just a great athlete, but not a stuntman. So he said, okay. So he came in and did this, and I saw that, and I gasped. It scared me again. I was frightened of these kids. He came in and did this, and he couldn't do that, because he won't work for another week or two. He'd be so banged up. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but he got up and said, what's next? <laughs> And he said, well, he just didn't know that he wasn't supposed to do all of these things. He didn't get paid for them. Stuntmen get paid for each stunt. <coughs> and if you do another stunt or do it again, they get another, what we call, a hit. They bump. get a bump, a bump, a, yeah. another a pace, pace scale. He was doing two or three jobs there. Right. I'd be a multi-millionaire. <laughs> I had a fun running with a stunt thing in the second movie. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. The, the, the scene with Tarman in the second movie is he just sort of appears at the top of this culvert with the water going down, and he's chasing this kid, and uh, the kid pushes him into water, and that's the end of it. So I was kind of concerned, because I had about a five-foot drop, and it's right into this water, and it's like, geez, I've never done anything like in that. Suit. In the suit. In the full suit. And, the, and they tell me, well, uh, the suit is made out of foam, so you'll either float or it'll absorb water and you'll sink. <laughs> we don't really know. <laughs> but they had, evidently, they had a guy down below, a uh, frogman waiting down there, so I said, okay, fine. And then, but then he said, um, uh, we're bringing in a stuntman. I said, oh, great. So uh, we, we get ready to go, and um, I get up on, the, on, the, on the, the culvert there, and they bring in a stuntman to replace the kid to push me in the water. <laughs> that other person. Yeah, because it was too dangerous, I guess, for the kid to be up there. So this, this guy, he's just, he's just, he's just, bam, right in the water. And they tell me, flail your arms around when you fall, because otherwise you look dead. You know? <laughs> 
stunt people always, and whenever you see people falling, they're always doing this. That's so they know you're not just a, a dummy going over. So he pushes me over, and I look at the final film, and I'm just like a stick. <laughs> just nothing. So and I knew I was, I did a terrible job. So I said, I can do it again. No, we got it. We're moving on. Oh, you didn't sink. You didn't sink. Did you? Float or sink? Um, it, well, the water was about this deep. Oh, so well, once I hit it and got my bearing, uh, I could stand up and then it was. You should have grabbed the kid's ankle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. I didn't know about that. No, you never yeah. told us. Here's a question, though. Because um, the movie is usually like touted as a comedy. Before you guys started like on the movie, did you guys know that it was going to turn real fucking dark and real fast? Like, he shoots her in the head, guy climbs into the fire, like you're screaming like about breaking your hand and eating brains, like the whole world's just screwed like at that point. Like, did you guys have any idea? No. no. We're making a horror yeah. before horrible. Well, again, because between you and Clue and James and yeah. Don, it's like that is the funniest, like, first half of that. That movie is hysterical, yeah. like the interaction between you guys. Yeah. We just yeah. thought it was a horror movie, you know? Really? It was a little one case, the clock. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, um, in the rabbit weasel bags, there was the little clappy monkeys. That's what it was. Well, then we have a talking toy truck, too? No? Yeah. Didn't we? I don't know. Okay, I was high. <laughs> Did anyone see this film when you were a child? You know, how old, how old was the youngest that saw nine, this film? Nine, eight or nine, Seems to me it's pretty scary five, at times. Five, five, um, but I've heard five, people five, say they were six years old when they saw this. Six or seven. Six or seven. Six or seven. You saw it when you were seven. Your parents said, let's go see this. <laughs> seven? Oh, did they make you watch yeah. it or did you sneak to watch it? Did you have an older oh, brother? No, no, I would go with my dad. You did. <laughs> nice. Oh, God, I want out. <laughs> we 
you were there. Yeah, you were next to someone. <laughs> yeah, but it might have been worse and close, too, because then it sticks yeah. to you. Yeah, but both would, it was bad. It was, ooh. When we got to the stage and we had to go in wet to the, to the sets, and they pack us with the dirt and hose us down. It's like, yeah. oh my god, no. It was awful. It wasn't hot water. It was, you know. Well, so you guys wondered why I was doing the drugs. You know, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Um, okay, so James Cameron was amazing in it, but I feel like there's a lot of stuff he did that other actors might not have been able to pull off. So when he was doing the scenes, he was like howling and, you know, when you when you do the dogs, he was like, ah! <laughs> and like, you know, and, yeah, just like well, I said, were you kind of worried, like... Well, well when the zombie came out of the uh, ice chest, and, and Jimmy's like, ah! And then right past him, he's like, ah! And he's like, ah! And he's like, ah! And